What's going on guys? I am back from the dead. That's right, I'm still alive. People are asking me what the hell is going on. So basically, you know, the holidays happened. I took a little bit of time off and then right after that, life just kind of started punching me in the face with a couple stupid things and took up some time. You know, between getting some kind of stomach virus or flu, I don't know if it was food poisoning, but I was throwing up and just blowing my brains out really badly for two days and I lost like 20 pounds because I couldn't drink any water and um, I was really dehydrated. I almost had to go to the ER because of it. It was really bad. And then no more than eight hours after getting over that, my girlfriend got it, so I was taking care of her for a couple days. And then we had a sticky situation with her roommate and just, you know, getting her out of the house and taking care of that. If anybody's ever had roommate problems, you know, it can be a serious pain in the ass with that kind of stuff. So there's just been a lot of stuff going on. I had to stay down at her house for a little while and just make sure everything was okay. So anyways, we're gonna get back on track here. I have the blaster behind me. The blaster is all done. I'm getting ready to deliver that to the owner now. And um, I'll go over a couple things with that real quick. So there she is. You see she looks a lot better than when she came in. Put a new clutch in there. I put a new, not a new rear brake setup, but a new brake pad. And I had to do some work with this caliper. For you guys that follow the channel, you know, I took that thing apart. It was real corroded, the caliper was seized, and I had to do some playing around with that to make it work right. These Yamaha blasters from 88 to 02 had mechanical brakes, and if your brake setup looks like this, there's no master cylinder or anything. It is a cable brake, and it's really primitive and really not a very good design. And I believe in 03, from 03 to 06, or was it 04 to 06? I'm actually not sure. But I, I think it was 88 to 02, they had these old uh, style brakes and they're just notorious for locking up and having poor performance and constantly needing to be taken apart. And so that was kind of a pain in the butt, but it works right now. I got that working. And what I wound up doing, I was playing with this carburetor so much. Actually, let me get around the other side here. And I just finally axed the old carburetor and I put a new one on. And you're not gonna believe where this uh, carburetor came from. If it looks familiar, guys, it's the surviving carb from the Banshee. And the reason I figured I would throw it on there is because I have it, and I just figured I would try it, see if it works out. And um, it isn't a genuine Makuni, it is one of the Chinese knockoffs, but I think it's okay on a single carb uh, setup like this blaster. On something like a Banshee where you have two carbs, they really have to have tight tolerances and match, and I think that's why it ran kind of funky on the Banshee. It seems to be running well on the blaster, and that's that. Got rid of that tour system on there, pumped up the back tires, put new tires and wheels on the front. Not new, but fairly new. A lot better than the ones that came off of there. Old ones are sitting right there, pretty fried. I also replaced the, the lights. There's an LED in the front, and there's also an LED in the back. Unfortunately, they both blew out because I just discovered the voltage regulator's bad. So I'm still gonna deliver this quad the way it is now so the owner can start using it. And then I'm gonna order a voltage regulator, which is very easy to replace, and two new bulbs, and just throw them in at the guy's house because he lives right down the street anyway. So I'd rather just get it back to him how it is now because it runs good and he can, his, uh, his son can start enjoying it as it is. This project started out for the Yamaha Blaster that was sitting for about 10 years in someone's backyard. Although the Yamaha Blaster is a very simple design, it's an air-cooled two-stroke, very easy to work on, this was the first time that I've ever really worked on a Yamaha Blaster. With the exception of a 2006 limited edition that I had about 10 years ago, I've never really had my hands on one. Most of the issues on this quad were very easy to fix. The only thing that I ran into was rusty parts, seized pieces, and just wear and tear from sitting for 10 years. Sometimes working on a quad or a bike that's been sitting that long can be a huge hassle and way more work than what it would normally be. Luckily, with a little more trial and error than what I would have liked, I was able to finish this project. All in all, we put a new clutch in, new clutch basket, put new grips on it, cleaned the air filter, new oil, changed the rear brake system and cleaned that up, put new front wheels and tires on, put a new throttle cable on, and of course did some tuning to it. And I did do some carburetor work, but I ended up taking off the old carburetor, eliminating the tour system, and putting an aftermarket carb on. 
I also put new headlights and taillights in, but unfortunately they blew out because the voltage regulator needs to be replaced. And that's something I'm gonna do at the owner's house. But for now, it's time to get this quad back to the owner so they can start enjoying it for the rest of the winter. so that's gonna cap it for the blaster tired of looking at this thing let's switch up the scenery look real look good yeah there she is now let's get down to business I know you guys have been waiting for this it's a 2007 Raptor 700 it's got some kind of electrical issue not sure what's going on with it I really haven't had a chance to touch it it's actually been buried in the backyard. It looks like it's in pretty decent shape though. Pretty excited to work on this. These grips are about to get ripped off of here first thing. i never seen such Mickey Mouse grips in my life. So anyways, this thing just turns over and turns over and turns over, backfires, pops, make weird, makes weird sounds. So I'm hoping it's some kind of silly electrical problem. Paid 1800 bucks for this thing because it's in not running condition guy that bought it before me didn't really know what he was getting into and unfortunately he kind of got ripped off because it was running apparently it will run intermittently and then randomly just will not start it dies and you never know when it's going to start again so unfortunately he kind of got taken over the coals and I made out on that he paid three grand for it he told me about a month before I bought it excuse me and I bought it about 30 days after he did and for me, it was 1800 bucks, which I think is a very fair price for this. Hopefully it's very cheap to fix. Apparently there is a known issue with these. I'm still in the midst of figuring it out. So first things first, I'm gonna take the plastics off of this thing, get some basic parts that I need to order, and I'll make a parts list video. Possibly have that in this video, not sure yet. But I know I'll be getting new tires for this thing because sand paddles in the Philly area are kind of useless, especially for the type of riding that I do. And these paddles are kind of shot anyway front ones look okay so we'll see I'm probably just gonna scrap them and get a new set of tires for it because I have uh, pretty good places to buy sets of tires relatively inexpensive let's get the plastics off of this thing and see what's going on right off the bat I can see this thing is an electrical nightmare you can see the guys using mix matched bolts Our air filter definitely needs to be replaced see back here some stuff zip tied together this is the HMF little tuner optimizer that comes with the pipe I guess and uh, I mean, that could be the problem hopefully not but I'll be going over all these connections and grounds and everything this battery here is just not even the battery for this quad it's not sitting in the battery tray so that actually really relieves me because chances are it's some kind of stupid connection bad ground, something like that.
probably can get a better look at what's going on under here. You can see this tray here that comes down. It's like an underside of the plastics. And what's kind of cool, found this under there. It's the breather for the gas cap. I can probably strip that black paint and polish that up and put a new hose on there. It was just kind of sitting under there. You can also see this grab bar is pretty twisted up. Bottom's all scratched up too from doing wheelies and stuff. But really the problem is with how twisted and bent this is. So I was thinking about bending this back straight. I'm probably going to try to do that. And if I can't, it's missing a bolt over here too. I'm just going to order a new grab bar because I, anything that's, even if it, it's functional, when things are twisted up and stuff, it just looks like crap. And especially because of the way this is, it was making the plastic sit kind of weird in the back. So I want everything to be flush and tucked in right. So I will see maybe if I heat this up or I don't know, that's bent pretty bad and aluminum sometimes tough to bend. So without cracking it or, you know, making it look weird. So I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with that yet. So at this point, I'm just going to go over everything, check all the bearings and everything, see if anything is loose and wiggling. And that way I can make a parts list and get them the parts ordered. And in the meantime, once I've done that, I'm going to go over the wiring harness and see if I can get this thing running correctly. And also, while I have the plastics off, I'm going to take the, um, the gas tank off and I'm going to adjust the valves because it's fairly simple to do. And with everything off, I might as well do it anyway, even if they don't need anything. Uh, even if they're in spec, it's always good to check. So... Otherwise, let me take you to the computer and I'll show you what parts I'm going to be ordering. Alright guys, so I'm here in my eBay store. This is where I buy a lot of my parts. I'm just going to run down the list and show you the parts I've bought so far for the Raptor. First thing here is a set of fat bars, the 28 millimeters. And this is a cheapy part. You can see here the price is 24 bucks. With the shipping it comes to about 28 bucks. Now this is one of those parts that you can get away with getting a knockoff. It's not like a carburetor or an electrical part where you really want to go for the name brand. I've also bought these in the past for previous bikes I've owned, and I've also rolled them. I've rolled a quad with these bars, and they do hold up. So they feel just like a Pro Taper or like Renthal bars. This is just one of those cheap items you can buy for a bike to kind of spruce it up. And you know, it's a simple piece. It's just a piece of metal. It's nothing complex. Like I said before, it's really easy for knockoff companies to make cheap parts. So I went with those. I got the gunmetal color or titanium, I think it's called. Yeah, so that's going to make the bike look a lot nicer, I think, because the bars on there are bent. And I just like the look of the fat bars anyway. So next we have, this is unrelated. This is a steering stem bushing. You know, on a lot of Yamahas, the Blasters, Banshees, Raptors, they all use the same setup. It's just a plastic bushing here. And you, a lot of times you get a little bit of play in your steering. It's very easy to replace. You can see right here is 23 bucks. This isn't an OEM one. Uh, we'll see how this aftermarket one fits, but it should be okay, I would imagine. It's a pretty simple part. Uh, it comes with the two plastic bushings and the two oil seals, so we'll replace that. And these here are the risers that convert your stock uh, steering stem to go from the stock 7 8 inch bars to the 1 and 1 8 inch bars. Another one of those parts that you can get it cheap as a knockoff because it's very simple. It was $9.21, and I think this blue with the titanium will look pretty sharp, especially with the color graphics that I'm going to be going with. I also decided that I am going to get a new grab bar. Uh, the reason that I decided that is because I probably can straighten that other grab bar out, and it would look okay, but it's never going to be perfect, and it's probably not going to be 100% straight. It's going to look, even if it's just a little bit off, that really bothers me. I like the grab bars to be perfect, perfectly straight. I like the bumpers to be straight. And I also like the, hand, the bars to be straight. I think the fat bars look sharp. So it's just like simple things like that that really make a bike look clean. So for 48 bucks, I think it's worth getting the new bar. And I like that it has the built-in uh, fender supports right on there. I've bought parts from XFR before. They're affordable and they've always been top quality. So I decided to go with them. And then the last thing I bought from eBay in terms of the Raptor is this battery. Uh, it's just a cheapy battery. Just wanna make sure that everything works okay. I've got used these batteries before. It's another one of those things. They seem to work pretty well. They've lasted through the winter and everything. So this battery here will actually fit in the tray because the battery that's in there currently doesn't even fit in the battery tray. It looks like the guy tried to cut the tray to make it fit and it still sticks out, which just on these newer bikes, you know, this one actually has a check engine light. There's a lot of electrical issues you can have just from simple things like putting the wrong battery in there. So I'd rather just get one that's the right battery and I want it to fit in the tray anyway. 
So for 27 bucks, definitely worth it. Now I'll hop over to Motosport where I got these. Uh, these are the tires I bought right here. They're r tracks You guys have probably seen these before. They're very affordable. Motosport sometimes runs specials on these, but even at their regular prices, they're very cheap. Now, I wasn't originally gonna go with these tires. I've never run these before, but these the back rims on this quad are 10 inch, which is kind of an odd size for, well, it's not an odd size. It's just not a popular size for sport quads, at least in the rear. Usually they're nine or eight inch, nine inch especially. Um, that's the standard size that comes on most sport quads. So because I had to get a 10 inch rear tire, I couldn't go with the more affordable tires that I would normally go with. So this still isn't too bad. It came out to about 191 bucks shipped to my house. So we'll see how these tires are. And uh, it's good to try other parts anyway. And then here is the graphics kit that I bought. It's pretty cool. I think the, uh, the color scheme is gonna be cool with the white plastics. And you can see here, there is some white incorporated into these graphics, so it'll go with the plastics. And then when I have the titanium bars and those little blue risers and the black wheels, I can kind of see it in my head. I think it'll look pretty cool. It'll be a nice color scheme. So here's my spreadsheet so far. It just has all my costs and everything right here. And you can see we're at 366.48. So the ba I paid 1800 for the quad. So we're still under 2200 bucks. So hopefully if it's just a simple fix with the electrics, the electric system or you know something with the valves something that's not going to cost me any money it'll just be some time we're looking at under 2200 bucks for an 07 raptor with a title that's still a good deal if you ask me and i'll be able to make a good amount of money off of this if i can keep the price as low as it is right now all right guys so that's going to be it for today basically at this point i'm just going to throw this thing up on some stands check the bearings and everything like that Otherwise, guys, please comment and subscribe if you haven't already. Please give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And there should be new videos coming on a regular flow at this point. Sorry, guys, again for the delay and the lack of videos. But, you know, things happen in life. And until then, guys, I will see you in the next video. Have a good one. This legacy, you gon' see what's left of me. You gon' see success in me. You ain't seen the rest of I just wanna be the best at what I know. Better than the rest, just watch me grow. Put me to the test and watch me go. This is my quest, I'ma make it known. They call me obsessive, oh I know. Call me selective with my notes. Call me aggressive with my flow. Call me offensive even though. Yo, I ain't gonna lie, life's tough. Try to get by, life's rough. Try to do it right, it's not enough. Even though you try, you still mess up. But I'm still gonna fight for what I love. Still gonna die for what I love. Still gonna try, I won't give up. Still gonna fight until I've won. They say I'm way too obsessed and I've got nothing left. And I'm not quite there yet, but those words they'll